Congregation may be seated. Would our children come forward, please? Good morning. Good morning. morning. It's good to have you here. So I have something. I have a sticker for you. And you can put on one of these stickers. Okay. Yeah, you can put it on your shirt. You can put it on your hand. Yeah, that's nice. There you go. Okay, you're going to put it on the bad guy and cover him up? That's good. That's a good move. That's a good move. There you go. All right, so I want to share with you a story. I want to share with you a story that tells and reminds us all what Easter is all about. It started on Friday, and it was a sad day. Because Jesus, God's Son, died on the cross. And you see the people crying, they're really sad. But after Jesus died, some of his friends and family buried him in a tomb, and they had guards watching the tomb. Three days later, the earth shook. And an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and pushed the stone away. The angel sat on the stone. When the soldiers saw the angel, they fell to the ground. Can you fall to the ground? Can you fall backwards? All right. Mary was walking to the tomb with some of her friends. They saw the angel who said, Do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Go and tell Peter and the other disciples that Jesus is alive. Yeah. And how do you think they felt with that news? You might think that. But they actually ran away. They were amazed and they were terrified until, until Jesus met them later. Only then did they understand that God raised Jesus from life to death. Now that story happened long ago, didn't it? Yeah. But it matters today. That's why we gather here to sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. Because Jesus is alive in our hearts, in our minds, in our world, in our actions. So that sticker that I gave you reminds us to follow Jesus. And I'm going to give you another cross. That's kind of like a Good Friday cross. But here's another cross that if you put it under the light, it will glow in the dark. And remember that the light of Jesus shines through you each and every day. You cover them up. Okay, here you go. So how about we uh, say a little prayer together? And I have for you a a prayer card as, as well. There you go. Now, 
Can you uh, pray with me? Dear Jesus, Jesus, help us to see you you in the cross cross, and in the empty tomb tomb. because we know God raised you from death to life. Amen. Well, thank you for, for, for coming forward. It's good to have you here. <laughs> and you know what? You can, you, can share, you can share the love of Jesus with whoever brought you here after the service, okay? I want you to, you can come up and take a flower. Not the whole flower, just break off one of the blooms, okay? And give it to someone that loves you just as you love them. All right? Good to have you here. You can go back and have a seat with your parents. The grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord is with you. you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, 
that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the reading of God's word. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with them. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. We will now read responsively Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. The stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The Lord has begun. It is marvelous in our God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, and which you you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, 
Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles. I'm fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Congregation may stand for a gospel acclamation. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Congregation may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Events do not always turn out the way we anticipate. I've baptized many a child and never saw them again. I've married many a couple only to have their marriage, their love, end in divorce. 
But one thing, every person I have ever buried, they stayed there. The pyramids of Egypt famously contain the mummified bodies of great kings. Westminster Abbey in England contains the graves of many a noble person. Arlington Cemetery is honored for the graves of many wonderful Americans. Muhammad's tomb is noted for the stone coffin containing the prophet's bones. But Jesus' tomb is famous because it is empty. And because of the empty tomb, 2,000 years later, we continue to gather to celebrate that the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. We gather with billions of Christians around the world. Now the Gospels that tell the story of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all tell the story a bit differently. But all of them agree that the tomb is empty. Following Jesus' death on the cross, following his burial, when the women go to the tomb, they discover that the tomb is empty. This year, we hear that story as recorded by Mark. And I want you to pull out your celebrate and read that last, the very last sentence, the eighth verse from, from Mark's gospel. Reading together. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. Terror, amazement, fear. That is the women's reaction to what they experienced, the empty tomb on that first Easter morning. They had gone to the tomb for one reason, to anoint a dead body, to give their friend Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, a proper burial. The large stone had already been rolled away. They were met by a young man, perhaps an angel, who told them to go and tell the disciple and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of them to Galilee, where they will see him as he told them. But Mark's gospel ends so abruptly it kind of leaves us hanging with the women fleeing the tomb in fear and amazement and terror and telling no one. When was the last time you watched a Hollywood movie that ended in suspense? Usually they have happy endings, and if they don't have happy endings, we know that there will be a sequel to the movie. You know, most Bibles... They include a longer ending to Mark's gospel. But these are later additions that seemingly finish the story, including accounts of the risen Christ meeting his disciples, including the disciples struggling with fear, struggling to believe, including Jesus ascending into heaven. These are stories that we will hear from Matthew, Luke, and John in the weeks that follow. The book, The God Conversation, notes our desire to always have stories end with a happy ending. And they lived happily ever after. It is the line in fairy tales. It is often the point of movies. It is usually the point of love songs. Yet real life, real life disappoints. And those women that go to the tomb on that Easter morning, they knew disappointment. They understand death. And they were just trying to move on with their lives. 
by giving Jesus an appropriate burial. They were not prepared for the unexpected. In December of 2000, Reuters reported that a man in Kazakhstan was trying to steal some electrical cable and he was electrocuted. He was Muslim, and he was given a proper Muslim burial, buried just beneath the surface. He was electrocuted, but not dead. And he unearthed himself, and naked, he tried to wave down a car. You can imagine how that went. And then imagine the surprise of his family when he showed up at his funeral. No one survives crucifixion. People do survive being electrocuted. The women on that first Easter morning were not ready to meet the resurrected Christ are we. In the Easter choice, Scott Hosey says that Easter is an incredible proclamation that Jesus rose again from the dead. And we can look at that many different ways. We can look at that agnostically or cynically, saying we don't know what to make of it or who cares. Or we can deny it, calling it fiction Myth, fantasy, a pious wish. But I think we gather here today to contemplate what the empty tomb, the fact that the Lord is risen, risen what it means for us today. Scozy suggests that the problem with most of us is that we're, we're not surprised enough by Easter. Many of us have heard this story from our youth. But he says, think about the fact that people believe that the earth is round, that the earth revolves around the sun. That was not always believed. And when it was first talked about, it caused quite a stir, quite a reaction. If we just leave Easter long ago and don't reevaluate it, if it's not shocking for us, I don't think it makes so much of a difference. Now, some try to figure out what Jesus' resurrected body was really like, and there's all kinds of theories and all kinds of explanations. I don't know. None of us know. We know that somehow that body was different. We know that that resurrected Christ did not stay a story shared with a few. It was a story that spread throughout the world. Pastor, author, and historian Leonard Sweet says, we know death and disappointment, unmet dreams, unmet goals, expressing disappointments like you can't win them all. Maybe it'll get better soon. Life must go on. Pick up the pieces. Nothing is forever. But Easter is about Jesus' escape from the grave and also about God's victory. Life over death. Love over hate. Hope over despair. Forgiveness over holding on to grudges. Easter is Jesus remembered, but also Jesus experienced in the here and now when we love one another. You know, Mark's account of the baptism of Jesus begins as is shown in that window. Jesus being baptized as an adult. Mark's account makes no message of Jesus being born, no message of his early life. And then... He ends abruptly. Mark says that, not Jesus' birth, but that is the beginning 
of the good news. And I dare say that Mark ends abruptly because the good news of Jesus was not just long ago, it was meant to be lived in the here and now. We may have our doubts, we may have our questions, but in this messed up and broken world, who else do we really have to follow other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? In his name, amen. Let us together confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, I will lead the opening petition and invite the congregation Members, as you feel called to lead petitions that follow. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen in love and has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church, where the church is persecuted, protected, where the church is privileged, granted humility, where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace. God of grace.
God of grace. God of grace. God of grace. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share God's peace with one another as you come to the Lord's table. We gather and we share this meal because the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
strengthened by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 367, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resent. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.